In this video, we will discuss the location and radiation of the AV valve murmurs. Generally speaking, the AV valve, mitral and tricuspid valve, stenotic murmurs are diastolic and regurgitant murmurs are systolic, but there are variations. Mitral stenotic, mitral regurgitant and mitral valve prolapse murmurs are best heard in the left fifth intercostal space or wherever the apex beat is. Mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation murmur is best heard in the apex beat area. So why does mitral regurgitation occur? Mitral regurgitation may be due to abnormalities in cord tendony, papillary muscles, myocardium and the other structures. Mitral regurgitation also occurs in acute myocardial infarction. So why mitral regurgitation occurs in acute myocardial infarction? Acute mitral regurgitation may occur in acute myocardial infarction due to posterior medial papillary muscle rupture. Why? Because a single blood vessel supplies this muscle. We have discussed this topic in detail on post MI papillary muscle rupture in other videos. So please watch that for further details. When does transient mitral regurgitation occur? Transient mitral regurgitation may occur during ischemia and in angina pectoris. There is prominent V wave due to marked rise in LA pressure. There is a marked rise in LA pressure. On palpation, apex beat is displaced laterally and there is a brisk systolic thrill or impulse of enlarged left ventricle at the apex. So in mitral regurgitation, there is enlargement of the left ventricle, whereas in mitral stenosis, right ventricle was enlarged. Now heart sounds in mitral regurgitation. S1, first heart sound is absent or soft, whereas in mitral stenosis, S1 was accentuated. There is physiologic wide splitting of the second heart sound. This is here wide splitting. It's physiologic wide splitting because it occurs in inspiration, not in expiration. Expiration is normal. So wide splitting in mitral regurgitation occurring inspiration only, physiological. Third heart sound. There is a third heart sound due to rapid filling and due to tensing of the papillary muscle and valve leaflet. And this third heart sound is followed by a mid-diastolic rumbling murmur. Mitral regurgitation also has different types of murmur. So we'll discuss them in detail now. And then there is a fourth heart sound in mitral regurgitation due to the left ventricular enlargement. Fourth heart sound produces double apical impulse. Fourth heart sound does not occur in mitral stage stenosis because left ventricle is normal in mitral stenosis. In chronic mitral regurgitation, there is marked left atrial enlargement, but it's without increase in left atrial and pulmonary pressure. It's opposite to that the left atrial pressure increase in mitral stenosis. But here, though left atrium is enlarged, but there is no increase in pressure. So in chronic severe mitral regurgitation, systolic thrill there is at T apex and left ventricle is hyperdynamic with brisk systolic impulse. When does atrial fibrillation occur in mitral regurgitation? Once left atrium dilates, atrial fibrillation is invariably present causing palpitation. Now the murmur of the mitral regurgitation. The murmur of the mitral regurgitation is classically holosystolic of grade 3 to 6 intensity at the apex and it radiates to two different positions. Number one, it radiates to axilla if anterior mitral leaflet prolapses. Holosystolic murmur at the apex. Radiate to axilla if anterior mitral leaflet is affected because of cord rupture. And it radiates to the base of the heart if posterior mitral leaflet prolapses due to cord rupture. So mitral regurgitation bomber may radiate to two different positions. Axilla if anterior mitral leaflet is affected and to the base of the heart if posterior mitral leaflet is affected. So what's the effect of exercise and well silva on mitral regurgitation murmur? The mitral regurgitation murmur increased by hand grip exercise and decreased by well silva maneuver. Now acute severe mitral regurgitation. In acute severe mitral regurgitation, the murmur is decrescendo mid-systolic. An acute pulmonary edema is 
common in patients with acute severe mitral regurgitation. Next, rapid rise in LA pressure causes early systolic decrescendo murmur. So there are different types of murmur. Let's see. The classical murmur in mitral regurgitation is holosystolic murmur at the apex radiating to axilla or to the base of the heart under the back. Second murmur is after the third heart sound is a mid diastolic rumbling murmur. That's what we discussed earlier. Third murmur occurs in acute severe mitral regurgitation. It's a decrescendo mid-systolic murmur. Three different types of murmur in mitral regurgitation depending on the condition. Acute severe mitral regurgitation, decrescendo mid-systolic murmur. After the third heart sound, it's a mid-diastolic murmur. And a classical murmur of the mitral regurgitation is holosystolic. Now mitral valve prolapse. The murmur of mitral well prolapse is also best heard at the apex beat area like mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation and murmur. The important feature of mitral well prolapse are mid or late systolic click followed by a systolic crescendo decrescendo murmur hooping or honking at the apex. So this is the mid systolic click occurring in mitral valve prolapse. So why does mid systolic click occur? It's produced by tensing of elongated cordy and prolapsed mitral leaflet. Systolic click is followed by a systolic crescendo decrescendo murmur hooping or honking at the apex. What's the effect of position change on the mitral valve prolapse murmur? On standing and on Valsalva maneuver, click and murmur come closer. Why? Because mitral valve prolapses due to decreased left ventricular volume and a murmur increases. So it comes earlier. Whereas on squatting and exercise which diminish the mitral valve prolapse, click murmur complex is delayed or reduced. So the murmur is reduced on squatting and exercise and increased on standing and valsalva maneuver.